Indigenous peoples have a deep understanding of the medicinal properties of rainforest plants, and they have developed complex systems of healing based on this knowledge. They use plants to treat a wide range of illnesses and ailments, and they have a very sophisticated understanding of how different plants interact with one another. Welcome to Opportuno, Episode 42, Botanical Treasures. This is the fourth in a series of what I will simply call Conversations. Even though the story is fictitious, the conversations are written as a verisimilitude, meaning the characters, subjects, events, and details may not be true, but are intended to be similar to a real-life story. Now, on to the conversation entitled Botanical Treasures. Today, we're joined by Alano Barlow and Olivia Cassidy two renowned scientists and researchers who have dedicated their lives to exploring the medicinal potential of rainforest plants and protecting the rainforest. Good afternoon, Alano and Olivia. It's an honor to have you both here today. Can you tell us about the importance of biodiversity and tropical rainforests? Thank you for having us. Biodiversity is crucial for maintaining a healthy and sustainable environment. Rainforests, in particular, are important because they cover only 6% of the Earth's surface but contain at least half of all species. Rainforests provide us with valuable resources such as food, shelter, and medicine. Yes, rainforests are home to an incredible variety of plants, animals, and microorganisms. In fact, only 1% of known species have been examined for medicinal potential, so the potential for discovering new medicines is vast. Elano, could you give me some examples of species, of birds and animals, that can only be found in the rainforest? Many animals living in the rainforest have unique features and behaviors. Animals in the rainforest face threats that include habitat loss, deforestation, hunting, and illegal pet trade. Some of these animals are endangered or critically endangered, and conservation efforts are underway to protect them and their habitat. The following is a list of 17 animals unique to the Amazon rainforest. Number 1. Amazon River Dolphin A freshwater dolphin that lives in the Amazon River and its tributaries. They have a unique pink color and a long, slender snout. Number 2. Giant Otter the largest species of the otter family found in and along the Amazon River. They can grow up to six feet long and live in social groups. Number three, bald wakari, a monkey with a distinctive bright red face and a bald head. They live in the western Amazon basin and feed on fruits and seeds. Number four, gray woolly monkey, a medium-sized monkey found in the Amazon rainforest. They have long, shaggy fur and live in family groups. Number 5. Golden Lion Tamarind A small, orange monkey with a lion-like mane of fur. They live in the Atlantic coastal forests of Brazil and have been endangered due to habitat loss. Number 6. Pygmy Marmoset Known as the world's smallest monkey, they live in small groups in the treetops of the Amazon rainforest, feeding mainly on insects and tree sap. Number 7. San Martin TT Monkey These small primates are found in the northeastern Amazon rainforest and are known for their distinctive white mustaches. They mate for life and are arboreal, rarely descending to the ground. Number 8. Pale-headed Saki Monkey This species of monkey is found in the western Amazon rainforest and is characterized by its thick, dark fur and pale head. They are frugivorous and live in small groups. Number 9. Amber Phantom Butterfly A beautiful and unique species of butterfly found in the Amazon rainforest with wings that mimic dead leaves. They feed on rotting fruit and tree sap. Number 10. Wire-tailed Mannequin These small birds are found in the understory of the Amazon rainforest and are known for their acrobatic mating dance. Males have a distinctive wire-like tail that they use in their display. They feed on fruit and insects. Number 11. Blue-throated macaw. 
This bird is a critically endangered species of parrot found in the savannas and palm groves of Bolivia in South America, with a small population estimated at less than 500 individuals. These birds have a distinct bright blue throat, green wings, and a yellow and blue body, and live in pairs or small groups. Habitat destruction and the illegal pet trade are the primary threats to their survival, and conservation efforts include habitat protection, breeding programs, and education initiatives to raise awareness about the importance of these birds. Number 12. Guianan Cock of the Rock The bright orange male of this bird species is a common sight in the Amazon, displaying its striking plumage to attract mates. Females are a more subdued brown color. Number 13. What's in? This unique bird has a distinct odor due to the fermentation of the leaves it eats. It has claws on its wings as a chick, allowing it to climb trees before it learns to fly. Number 14. Black caiman. This large and aggressive species of crocodilian is found throughout the Amazon basin. It feeds on fish, mammals, and other reptiles. Number 15. Arapaima gigas. Also known as the piruku, this fish can reach up to 9 feet in length and weigh over 400 pounds. It is an important food source for many indigenous communities in the Amazon. Number 16. Caracama. Also known as red-bellied pacu, is a large omnivorous freshwater fish found in the Amazon River Basin. They have distinctive red bellies and strong teeth capable of crushing hard nuts and seeds. They play an important role in the ecosystem by regulating the populations of their prey. And, number 17. Green Anaconda. This is the largest snake in the world and can reach lengths of over 29 feet. They are non-venomous and are found in the wetlands and swamps of the Amazon basin. Their diet consists of a wide range of prey, including fish, birds, and mammals, which they kill by constricting them with their powerful muscles. They are a crucial part of the food web in their ecosystem. The following nine species, out of these 17 listed, are on the endangered species list. Bald Wakari Grey Woolly Monkey Golden Lion Tamarin Pygmy Marmoset San Martin TT Monkey Pale-Headed Saki Monkey Blue-Throated Macaw Black Cayman and Arapaima Gigas it is very sad to see wildlife become extinct and totally disappear forever. However, there are some success stories about species thought to be on the brink of extinction being saved due to collaborative conversation efforts of many people working together. One of my favorite birds is the macaw parrot. To encourage you and let you know that the conservation efforts can and do make a difference to save endangered species from going extinct, I want to share with you a little information about the blue-throated macaw once thought to be extinct. The blue-throated macaw, also known as Eriglocagularis, is a critically endangered species of macaw that is native to Bolivia. The bird is known for its striking blue throat patch and green and blue plumage, and it was once thought to be extinct. The first sighting of the blue-throated macaw occurred in the 1860s, and it was not until the 1990s that a wild population of the species was discovered. During this period, the bird was heavily hunted for its feathers and meat, and its habitat was destroyed due to agriculture and logging. The last documented sighting of the blue-throated macaw in the wild was in the early 1980s. In 1992, a group of conservationists discovered a small population of blue-throated macaws living in a remote area of Bolivia, near the town of Trinidad. The discovery was a major breakthrough for conservationists who had been working to save the species from extinction. At the time, it was estimated that there were only around 50 individuals left in the wild. Conservation efforts were immediately put in place to protect the remaining birds, and the population has slowly been increasing over the years. The Bolivian government has implemented policies to protect the bird's habitat, and conservationists have worked to raise awareness about the importance of protecting the species. One of the most successful conservation efforts has been the establishment of the Barba Azul Nature Reserve in Bolivia. The reserve was created in 2008 and covers around 11,000 acres of land, providing a protected habitat for the blue-throated macaw and other threatened species. 
In addition to protecting their habitat, conservationists have also implemented breeding programs to increase the population of the blue-throated macaw. In 2003, a captive breeding program was established, and since then, over 50 chicks have been successfully hatched and released back into the wild. Today, the population of the blue-throated macaw is estimated to be around 500 individuals, and while the species is still critically endangered, conservation efforts have helped to prevent its extinction. Ongoing conservation efforts, including habitat protection and breeding programs, are crucial to ensuring the continued survival of this beautiful and unique species. This success story of saving the blue-throated macaw from becoming extinct is one of the many reasons I never tire of my desire to do what I can to protect and restore the rainforest. Thank you very much for sharing the story about how the blue-throated macaw, once thought extinct, was found and now growing in numbers thanks to conversation efforts of many dedicated people. The macaw is one of my favorite birds also. I once saw this video of a large flock of macaw parrots flying around and eating clay from a riverbank made of clay on what was called a macaw clay lick. Could you tell me a little about what a macaw clay lick is? Sure, I'd be happy to provide information on the clay licks of the Amazon rainforest. Clay licks, also known as clay cliffs or mud walls, are natural formations found in the Amazon rainforest where animals congregate to feed on the minerals contained within the clay. These mineral-rich clays are essential to the diets of many rainforest animals, particularly parrots, macaws, and other bird species, who rely on them for their calcium and sodium intake. The clay licks of the Amazon rainforest are distributed throughout the region, with the largest concentration found in the western Amazon basin, including parts of Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil. Some of the most famous and accessible clay licks are found in Tambopata National Reserve in Peru, the Yasuni National Park in Ecuador, and the Manu National Park in Peru. These clay licks attract a variety of wildlife, including parrots, macaws, toucans, and even mammals such as tapirs and monkeys. It's not uncommon to see hundreds of birds and animals gathered at these sites, creating a unique and awe-inspiring wildlife spectacle. Studies have shown that these clay licks also play an important role in the rainforest ecosystem as they help to distribute nutrients throughout the forest and create important habitats for a variety of plant and animal species. In addition, the clay licks provide opportunities for ecotourism, allowing visitors to experience the natural beauty and diversity of the Amazon rainforest while supporting local communities and conservation efforts. Thank you. That was very interesting. I didn't realize that the Amazon rainforest was the only home for so many animals. Olivia, you said that only 1% of known species have been examined for medicinal potential, so the potential for discovering new medicines is vast. Could you provide me several species of plants, animals, and microorganisms in the Amazon rainforest that have been found to provide potential or actual benefits as medicinal treatment or prevention of disease? Certainly. Here are some examples. Number 1. Cinchona tree, also known as Cinchona officinalis. Used to treat malaria and fever. The bark contains quinine, a chemical compound with antimalarial properties. Number 2. Camu camu, also known as Mercieria jubia. Rich in vitamin C, used for its antioxidant properties and to boost the immune system. Number 3. Cat's claw, also known as Uncaria tomentosa. Used to treat inflammation, viral infections, and digestive disorders. Number 4. Pau diaco, also known as Tababuya impetiginosa. Used as an antifungal and antimicrobial agent, and to treat inflammation. Number 5. Copaiba tree, also known as Copaifera SPP used for its anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties, and as a pain reliever. Number 6. Akai palm, also known as Euterpe oleracea. Rich in antioxidants, used for its anti-inflammatory and immune-boosting properties. Number 7. Dragon's blood, also known as Croton leclery. Used as a wound healer and for its anti-inflammatory properties. 
Number 8. Jatoba, also known as Hymenia corbral. Used to treat respiratory and urinary tract infections, and as an antifungal and antimicrobial agent. Number 9. Graviola, also known as Anona muricata. Used as an anti-cancer agent and for its antiviral properties. And number 10. Tucuma palm, also known as Astrocarium tucuma. Rich in antioxidants, used for its anti-inflammatory and immune-boosting properties. Please note that while these plants and animals have been used for medicinal purposes by indigenous peoples for centuries, more research is needed to fully understand their potential benefits and any potential risks. It's important to consult with a healthcare professional before using any natural remedies for medical purposes. That's amazing. Can you give us an example of a medicinal plant that comes from the rainforest that is used regularly all over the world in modern medicine? There are many medicinal uses for plants found in the rainforest other than just those that are used by modern medicine. For a plant to be used in modern medicine, it must go through many tests and get approval to be sold to the public. Also, a drug company is looking to profit from selling the drug, which many times keeps natural remedies from plants from ever reaching the public as a modern pharmaceutical. There are many naturally occurring medicinally useful compounds and plants that are considered unprofitable or unobtainable in large quantities from natural sources that have been duplicated in the laboratory using synthesis. I use the word duplicated loosely as replicating the medicinal benefits from natural to a chemically altered compounds by scientists in a laboratory is not an easy task. Synthesizing natural compounds to replicate that natural compound chemically can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on whether or not the synthesized drug is as safe and works as well as the natural plant. We must keep in mind that without first having the plant to know how to create a synthesized drug based on the beneficial compounds found in the plant, we would never have had that particular synthesized drug. A few of the many plants from the Amazon rainforest that have found uses in modern medicine are as follows. Sangre de Grotto is a natural latex obtained from the bark of the Croton Leclery tree and is commonly used by locals to treat wounds. Modern medicine has extracted a chemical from Sangre de Grotto called SP303, which is effective in treating diarrhea caused by cholera, AIDS, travel, and antibiotics. Jabirandi is a shrub tree species that is found in the Amazon, and modern medicine has derived a medication called pilocarpine from the shrub's leaves, which is still used today as eye drops to treat increased pressure in the eyes and orally to relieve dry mouth. And, cinchona trees are famous for being the source of quinine, which is widely used to treat malaria and babesiosis. The bark extract of the quinine tree has been used to treat malaria since the 1600s, and cinchona officinalis, which is the national tree of Peru, appears on the country's coat of arms. The importance of these plants found in the Amazon rainforest, and other plants found in rainforest, being utilized by mankind cannot be overstated. Plants found in the rainforest have played a significant role in major medicinal breakthroughs throughout history, and there is still much to be discovered in the unexplored jungle. Safeguarding the plant species of the rainforest means preserving hope for the present and future health and well-being of humanity. And it's not just medicines. Rainforest plants also provide us with natural products like rubber, cocoa, and coffee. Our expertise and primary study has been with the Amazon rainforest. However, all rainforests in the world are extremely important to protect and safeguard. There are 10 major rainforests and several smaller rainforests. The top five largest rainforests in the world are as follows, sorted in size by square miles from the largest to the smallest. Number one, Amazon rainforest, South America, totaling 2.1 to 2.7 million square miles in size. The Amazon rainforest is the largest tropical rainforest in the world, spanning over 7 million square kilometers across nine South American countries. It is home to the largest collection of plant and animal species in the world, many of which are endemic to the region. The Amazon River, the largest river in the world by volume, runs through the rainforest. 
The Amazon stands out as one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. With a habitat that supports over 3 million species, this rainforest owes much of its vibrancy to the presence of more than 2,500 tree species. It's worth noting that these trees make up one-third of all tropical trees known to mankind, playing a critical role in the creation and sustenance of this lush habitat. Number 2. Congo Rainforest Africa, totaling 780,000 to 1.5 million square miles in size. The Congo Rainforest, also known as the Congo Basin, covers over 1.5 million square kilometers in Central Africa. It is the second largest rainforest in the world and is home to a diverse array of plant and animal species, including gorillas, chimpanzees, and forest elephants. Number 3. Indonesian Rainforest Southeast Asia, totaling 246,000 to 367,000 square miles in size. The Indonesian rainforest, also known as the Sunderland, covers over 1.4 million square kilometers across Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. It is one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet and is home to a large number of endemic species, including the Sumatran tiger and orangutan. Number 4. New Guinea Rainforest Oceania, totaling 146,000 to 175,000 square miles in size. The New Guinea Rainforest is located on the island of New Guinea and covers over 500,000 square kilometers. It is one of the most remote and unexplored rainforests in the world and is home to a diverse range of plant and animal species, including birds of paradise and tree kangaroos. And number 5. Madagascar Rainforest Madagascar, totaling 23,000 to 49,000 square miles in size. The Madagascar rainforest covers over 200,000 square kilometers on the island of Madagascar. It is one of the most unique rainforests in the world, with a high level of endemism among its plant and animal species. Over 90% of the wildlife found in Madagascar is endemic to the island, including lemurs, tenrecs, and fossas. The remaining rainforest, from the largest to the smallest, include. Number 6. Valdivian Temperate Rainforest in Chile and Argentina, totaling approximately 95,000 square miles. Number 7. Tungas National Forest in Alaska, totaling approximately 26,000 square miles. Number 8. Basawa's Biosphere Reserve in Nicaragua, totaling approximately 7,300 square miles. Number 9. Harapan Rainforest in Sumatra, Indonesia, totaling approximately 5,386 square miles. Number 10. Sundarbans Rainforest in Bangladesh and India, totaling approximately 3,860 square miles. Number 11. Kahuzabiega National Park in Democratic Republic of Congo, totaling approximately 2,231 square miles. Number 12. Taman Negara National Park in Malaysia, totaling approximately 1,677 square miles. Number 13. Daintree Rainforest in Australia, totaling approximately 463 square miles. Number 14. Kinabalu National Park in Malaysia, totaling approximately 291 square miles. And number 15. Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve in Costa Rica, totaling approximately 26 square miles. All of these rainforests are important to the global ecosystem and contain a vast array of plant and animal species that are essential to human survival. They also play a critical role in regulating the Earth's climate by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It is crucial that these rainforests are protected and preserved for future generations. That's really interesting. Why are rainforests being destroyed at such an alarming rate? Unfortunately, there are many factors that contribute to rainforest destruction, including agriculture, logging, and mining. 
The primary reason for deforestation is corporate greed, as huge corporations seek to profit from commodities like palm oil, soy, cocoa, pulp and paper, timber, and beef. The Amazon rainforest has been significantly impacted by deforestation, with 18% of the forest being destroyed since the 1970s. On average, 10,000 acres of rainforest cover have been destroyed every day since 1998, and in 2021 alone, 4.8 million acres of the Amazon rainforest were lost. The primary cause of deforestation in the Amazon is the clearing of land for cattle ranching, which accounts for 80% of the deforestation. In one Brazilian state, soy farming has caused 400 square miles of forest to be cleared in the last 10 years. Unfortunately, deforestation in Brazil has continued to rise, with 2021 being the worst year for the Amazon in 15 years. And this destruction has a devastating impact not only on the environment, but also on indigenous communities who rely on the rainforest for their livelihoods and survival. So what can be done to protect rainforests and their biodiversity? It's crucial that we take action to conserve rainforests and the indigenous cultures that have protected and managed them for generations. This includes supporting indigenous land rights, promoting sustainable land use practices, and reducing demand for products that contribute to deforestation. Science and research also play an important role in rainforest conservation. We must continue to study rainforest ecosystems and species, and develop new technologies to monitor and protect them. Thank you both for sharing your insights on the importance of biodiversity and tropical rainforests. It's clear that these ecosystems are crucial not only for the environment, but also for the survival and well-being of indigenous communities and the world as a whole. Let's delve deeper into your experiences exploring the rainforest and discovering its wonders. To start, can you tell us about your first experience exploring a rainforest? My first time exploring a rainforest was in the Amazon. I was in awe of the incredible diversity of plants and animals that were all around me. It was like being transported to another world. My first experience was in Borneo. I was struck by the incredible beauty of the forest and the sounds of the wildlife. It was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. What are some of the most interesting or unusual plants you've discovered in your explorations? One of the most interesting plants we've discovered is the Rafflesia, which is the largest flower in the world. It's also a parasitic plant, and it smells like rotting meat in order to attract flies for pollination. We've also discovered a number of plants with medicinal properties. Many discoveries of medicinally beneficial plants, such as the cinchona tree, which produces quinine, a powerful anti-malaria drug, have been discovered in the rainforest. What challenges have you faced while exploring rainforests? One of the biggest challenges we face is the sheer size and complexity of the forest. It can be difficult to navigate and locate the plants we're looking for. Another challenge is the wildlife. While it's amazing to see so many animals in their natural habitats, it can also be dangerous. We've had encounters with snakes, spiders, and other animals that can be deadly if not approached with caution. How do you balance your scientific goals with the need to preserve and protect the rainforest and its inhabitants? We always work with local communities and indigenous peoples to ensure that our research is respectful and sustainable. We also work to raise awareness about the importance of rainforest conservation. It's important to remember that rainforests are not just sources of scientific discovery, but they are also vital habitats for millions of species, including humans. What do you think are the biggest threats facing rainforests today? One of the biggest threats is deforestation, which is driven by corporate greed and the desire for cheap commodities like palm oil and timber. Another threat is climate change, which is causing changes in rainfall patterns and temperatures that are affecting the health of rainforests. What can individuals do to help protect rainforests? Individuals can support organizations that work to protect rainforests and their inhabitants. They can also make lifestyle changes, such as reducing meat consumption and supporting sustainable agriculture. 
It's also important to remember that indigenous peoples and frontline communities are often the best defenders of rainforests. Supporting their rights and protecting their lands is a critical part of rainforest conservation. Thank you both for sharing your experiences and insights on rainforest exploration, conservation, the importance of rainforests and the threats they face from deforestation. Now, I want to focus on the medicinal potential of rainforest plants. Can you tell us more about this? Absolutely. Rainforests are a treasure trove of medicinal plants. At least half of all species live in rainforests, and yet only 1% of known species have been examined for medicinal potential. That's right. Rainforest medicines have already provided modern society with cures and pain relievers, such as quinine, which is extracted from the bark of the cinchona tree and used as an aid in the cure of malaria. Can you give us some more examples of rainforest plants that have medicinal properties? Sure. The rosy periwinkle, found in Madagascar, contains vinblastine and vincristine, which are used to treat leukemia and Hodgkin's disease. And the Pacific yew, found in the northwestern United States, contains taxol, which is used to treat ovarian and breast cancers. And the rainforest plants we mentioned earlier are just a few examples. There are many more rainforest plants that have potential medicinal properties that we have yet to discover. How do you go about discovering these plants and their medicinal properties? It's a long and challenging process. First, we have to identify plants that show potential based on traditional knowledge, chemical analysis, or other factors. Then, we have to extract and test the compounds to see if they have any therapeutic value. And even if we find a promising compound, it can take years of research and clinical trials to determine if it's safe and effective for human use. What are some of the challenges you face in this work? One of the biggest challenges is the loss of rainforest habitats. As we discussed previously, deforestation is destroying rainforests at an alarming rate. This not only threatens the survival of many plant species, but also makes it more difficult for us to find and study them. Another challenge is the lack of funding for this kind of research. Pharmaceutical companies are more interested in developing drugs that will generate profits, and there's often not enough financial incentive to study plants that can't be patented. What can be done to address these challenges and promote the discovery and development of rainforest medicines? First and foremost, we need to protect rainforest habitats and the indigenous people and communities that rely on them. This is not only important for the preservation of biodiversity, but also for the preservation of traditional knowledge and cultural practices. We also need more investment in this kind of research. Governments, philanthropic organizations, and other stakeholders can provide funding and support for the discovery and development of rainforest medicines. Thank you both for sharing your knowledge and expertise on this important subject. Let's discuss the importance of indigenous peoples and their relationship with rainforests. This is an important topic that we are passionate about. So, can you tell us a little bit about the relationship between indigenous peoples and rainforests? For thousands of years, indigenous peoples have relied on the rainforest for their survival. They have developed an intricate knowledge of the plants, animals, and ecosystems that make up the forest, and this knowledge has been passed down from generation to generation. That's right. Indigenous peoples have a deep understanding of the medicinal properties of rainforest plants, and they have developed complex systems of healing based on this knowledge. They use plants to treat a wide range of illnesses and ailments, and they have a very sophisticated understanding of how different plants interact with one another. That's fascinating. Can you give us some examples of the medicinal plants that indigenous peoples use? Sure. There are many examples, but one that comes to mind is the cinchona tree mentioned earlier. The bark of this tree contains quinine, which is a powerful anti-malaria drug. Indigenous peoples have been using cinchona bark to treat malaria for centuries. Another example is the cat's claw vine. Indigenous peoples in South America have been using cat's claw for centuries to treat arthritis, digestive problems, and other ailments. 
Modern research has shown that cat's claw has anti-inflammatory and immune-boosting properties. That's amazing. So, why is it important to preserve the relationship between indigenous peoples and rainforests? There are many reasons. First and foremost, indigenous peoples are the guardians of the rainforest. They have been protecting these ecosystems for thousands of years, and they have a deep understanding of how to maintain the delicate balance between humans and nature. That's right. When we talk about rainforest conservation, we often focus on the ecological benefits of preserving these ecosystems. But it's important to remember that indigenous peoples are an integral part of the ecosystem. If we lose the knowledge and traditions of these communities, we risk losing the rainforest itself. That's a really important point. So, what can be done to support indigenous peoples and their relationship with rainforests? There are many things that can be done. One of the most important is to recognize the rights of indigenous peoples and support their efforts to protect their lands and cultures. This means working with indigenous communities to develop conservation strategies that take into account their needs and priorities. Another important step is to support indigenous-led initiatives that promote sustainable development and economic empowerment. This includes initiatives that promote ecotourism, sustainable agriculture, and other forms of economic activity that are compatible with rainforest conservation. Those are great suggestions. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and insights about the relationship between indigenous peoples and rainforests. It was a pleasure. We have discussed the incredible medicinal potential of rainforest plants as well as the important relationship between indigenous peoples and their environment. I'd like to shift the conversation to a pressing issue, deforestation and corporate greed. Alano, you've seen firsthand the effects of deforestation on the rainforest ecosystem. Can you describe what's happening and why it's so concerning? Yes, of course. Deforestation is the clearing of forested areas to create land for human use, such as agriculture, ranching, mining, and logging. In the rainforest, deforestation is often done through slash-and-burn agriculture, where farmers cut down trees and burn the area to create farmland. Unfortunately, the rainforest soil is not well-suited for agriculture, so after a few years of use, the land becomes unproductive and the farmers move on to another area, repeating the cycle. This practice destroys the ecosystem as the forest canopy is removed, leading to increased soil erosion, loss of biodiversity, and decreased rainfall. Additionally, deforestation releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change. Rainforests are one of the largest carbon sinks on the planet, storing billions of tons of carbon in their trees and soil. Deforestation is responsible for up to 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions, making it a major contributor to climate change. That's alarming. What's driving deforestation in the rainforest? The primary driver of deforestation is corporate greed. Companies want access to the rainforest's natural resources, such as timber, palm oil, soy, and minerals. These resources are often exported to developed countries for consumption or processing, creating massive profits for these corporations. Unfortunately, these profits come at the expense of the rainforest and the indigenous peoples who rely on it. Yes, and it's important to note that the impacts of deforestation are not just environmental. Indigenous peoples and local communities who have lived in harmony with the rainforest for generations are also impacted. Deforestation destroys their homes, disrupts their livelihoods, and threatens their cultures and ways of life. Indigenous peoples and their knowledge of the rainforest are integral to preserving the ecosystem and its biodiversity. Their voices must be heard and their rights respected. How can we address deforestation and protect the rainforest ecosystem? There are a number of ways we can address deforestation. One is through policy changes that regulate and limit the activities of corporations that contribute to deforestation. For example, governments can implement policies that require companies to use sustainable practices, such as reforestation and reduced-impact logging. 
Additionally, consumers can play a role by demanding sustainably sourced products and supporting companies that prioritize environmental and social responsibility. Another way to address deforestation is to support the rights and autonomy of indigenous peoples and local communities. Indigenous-led conservation efforts have proven to be effective in protecting the rainforest while also supporting the livelihoods and cultures of these communities. Supporting these efforts can help create a more just and sustainable future for all. Thank you both for shedding light on this critical issue. It's clear that we need to take action to protect the rainforest ecosystem and the communities that rely on it. One important aspect of this work is the role of science and research in rainforest conservation. Ilano and Olivia, can you tell us more about this? Of course. Science and research are essential components of rainforest conservation efforts. Without scientific knowledge, it is difficult to understand the ecological processes that sustain these ecosystems and the potential impact of human activities on them. That's right. Science can also help us identify new species and understand their ecological roles, which can inform management and conservation strategies. For example, we can use genetic analysis to determine the diversity and relatedness of different species, which can help us prioritize areas for conservation. That's fascinating. Can you give us an example of how science has been used to conserve rainforests? Sure. In the Amazon, researchers have been using satellite imagery to track deforestation rates and identify areas of high conservation value. This information can then be used to create protected areas and help enforce anti-deforestation policies. Another example is the use of traditional ecological knowledge, which is the knowledge and practices of indigenous and local communities. This knowledge can be combined with scientific research to develop sustainable management practices that benefit both people and the environment. It's great to hear that traditional ecological knowledge is being incorporated into scientific research. How else can science and research be used to conserve rainforests? One important area is the development of sustainable land use practices. For example, agroforestry systems that combine crops and trees can provide both economic benefits for local communities and conservation benefits for the environment. Those are some great examples. What can individuals do to support rainforest conservation efforts? Another area is the development of alternative income streams that reduce pressure on rainforests. For example, the development of sustainable tourism can provide economic benefits without causing environmental damage. There are many things individuals can do, such as reducing their consumption of products that contribute to deforestation, such as palm oil and beef. They can also support organizations that work to conserve rainforests and protect the rights of indigenous and local communities. Thank you both for sharing your insights on the role of science and research in rainforest conservation. It's clear that science can play a critical role in helping us protect these valuable ecosystems for generations to come. I understand that you are both experts in traditional ecological knowledge and rainforest conservation. Ilano, what is traditional ecological knowledge and how does it relate to rainforest conservation? Traditional ecological knowledge, or TEK, is the knowledge that indigenous and local communities have accumulated over generations about the natural world. It includes their understanding of the interactions between different species, the ecosystem services provided by different plants and animals, and the ways in which humans can use and manage natural resources sustainably. In the context of rainforest conservation, TEK is incredibly important. Rainforests are complex ecosystems that are shaped by a wide range of ecological, social, and cultural factors. Indigenous and local communities have developed sophisticated systems for managing and using rainforest resources sustainably, and their knowledge can help inform conservation efforts. Olivia, can you give us an example of how traditional ecological knowledge, also known as TEK, has been used in rainforest conservation? Sure. One example comes from the Amazon rainforest, where indigenous communities have long practiced agroforestry, the cultivation of crops alongside trees. 
They have developed sophisticated knowledge systems for selecting and managing different crop and tree species, as well as for managing soil fertility and water resources. In recent years, scientists and conservationists have begun working with indigenous communities to incorporate these agroforestry practices into conservation efforts. By promoting sustainable land use practices that are compatible with traditional knowledge, we can support both cultural diversity and biodiversity in the rainforest. That's fascinating. But what about the role of science in rainforest conservation? How does TEK fit in with scientific research? Scientific research is important in rainforest conservation, but it is not the only way of knowing. TEK provides a different perspective on the natural world, one that is based on direct observation and experience over many generations. TEK can complement scientific research by providing insights into the complex social and cultural dimensions of rainforest conservation. It can also help scientists and conservationists identify important areas of research that may have been overlooked or undervalued. That makes sense. But what about the challenges of incorporating TEK into conservation efforts? Are there any barriers to doing so effectively? Yes, there are certainly challenges. One of the biggest is the fact that TEK is often undervalued or dismissed by policymakers and other stakeholders. This is partly due to a lack of understanding about what TEK is and how it can be useful in conservation. Another challenge is the fact that TEK is not static. It is constantly evolving and adapting to changing social and ecological conditions. This means that we need to be flexible and open-minded in our approach to incorporating TEK into conservation efforts. Finally, there is the challenge of ensuring that TEK is used in a way that respects and benefits the communities that hold it. We need to work with indigenous and local communities as equal partners in conservation efforts and ensure that they have control over how their knowledge is used and shared. Thank you for sharing your insights. It's clear that traditional ecological knowledge has an important role to play in rainforest conservation and that we need to do more to value and incorporate this knowledge into our conservation efforts. As experts in rainforest ecology and conservation, can you tell us about the biggest challenges facing rainforest conservation efforts? Certainly. There are a number of challenges facing rainforest conservation. One of the biggest is the demand for resources such as timber, palm oil, and mining. As a result, there is constant pressure to clear forests for these purposes. Additionally, climate change is affecting the health of rainforests and making them more susceptible to diseases and natural disasters such as wildfires. Finally, there is the issue of poverty in communities that live in or around rainforests, as they may turn to unsustainable practices such as logging and hunting in order to survive. How can these challenges be addressed? There are a number of ways to address these challenges. One is to work with governments and corporations to promote sustainable practices and to protect rainforest areas. Another is to support local communities and provide them with alternative sources of income, such as ecotourism. It is also important to invest in research and development of new technologies that can help reduce the demand for resources that drive deforestation. Finally, we need to raise awareness about the importance of rainforests and the consequences of their destruction. What role do individuals play in rainforest conservation? Individuals can play a critical role in rainforest conservation. One way is by making conscious choices about the products they buy and the companies they support. By choosing sustainably sourced products and avoiding those that contribute to deforestation, individuals can help reduce demand for resources that drive deforestation. Additionally, Individuals can support rainforest conservation organizations and donate money to help fund their efforts. Finally, raising awareness among friends, family, and colleagues about the importance of rainforest conservation is also important. Thank you for sharing your insights on the challenges of rainforest conservation and how we can address them. You are very welcome. Thank you for your interest in rainforest conservation. Let's talk about the intersection of rainforest conservation and climate change. To start off, 
Can you explain how rainforest conservation and climate change are connected? Rainforests play a critical role in regulating the Earth's climate. They act as carbon sinks, absorbing and storing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When rainforests are destroyed or degraded, this carbon is released back into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change. In addition, rainforests are home to a vast array of plant and animal species, many of which are adapted to specific climatic conditions. As the climate changes, these species may struggle to survive, leading to biodiversity loss. That's a great explanation. How do you think rainforest conservation can help mitigate climate change? Rainforest conservation can play a significant role in mitigating climate change by preserving the carbon stored in rainforests. By protecting rainforests from deforestation and degradation, we can prevent the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Additionally, rainforests can be used as a tool for carbon sequestration. Through programs such as our EDD+, that stands for Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, countries can receive financial incentives for keeping their rainforests intact and for implementing sustainable forestry practices. That's interesting. Can you explain more about our EDD+, and how it works? Sure. REDD Plus is a program developed by the United Nations to encourage the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation and forest degradation in developing countries. The program works by providing financial incentives to countries that reduce their emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, as well as those that increase their forest carbon stocks through afforestation, reforestation, and other conservation activities. What are some of the challenges in implementing rainforest conservation as a tool for mitigating climate change? There are many challenges to implementing rainforest conservation as a tool for mitigating climate change. One of the biggest challenges is funding. Rainforest conservation requires significant financial resources, and there is often a lack of funding available. Additionally, there are political challenges, as many countries are hesitant to prioritize conservation over economic development. There are also challenges in measuring the impact of conservation activities, as well as ensuring that the benefits of conservation are shared fairly among local communities. What can individuals do to support rainforest conservation and address climate change? Individuals can play an important role in supporting rainforest conservation and addressing climate change. One of the most important things individuals can do is reduce their carbon footprint by using public transportation, eating a plant-based diet, or reducing meat in their diet, and reducing their energy consumption. People are often reluctant to give up eating meat in their diet, and for good reason. It is common knowledge that adding meat to one's diet can be a great source of protein, fat, and micronutrients. However, just making sure that meat being eaten is not grown in the rainforest will help to decrease the demand of clearing rainforest land to have pastureland for raising cattle. Eggs are also a fantastic source of protein and vitamins, offering an impressive nutritional profile at just 78 calories per egg. One large egg contains approximately 6 grams of protein, making it an efficient and rich source of this essential nutrient. Additionally, eggs are abundant in other important nutrients such as vitamin D, which supports bone health and boosts the immune system, and choline, which promotes metabolism, liver function, and fetal brain development. Furthermore, egg yolks contain lutein and zeaxanthin, two compounds that can significantly benefit eye health. These nutrients have been shown to reduce the risk of age-related eye conditions, such as cataracts and macular degeneration, which are the leading causes of blindness in individuals over 55 years old. By incorporating eggs into your diet, you can reap these nutritional benefits and support your overall health and wellness. Eating meat and eggs, but in lower portions, than is traditionally eaten in a Western diet, can improve one's health, and the reduction in meat consumption will have less detrimental impact on the environment, especially if that meat is from the rainforest. A flexitarian diet is a plant-based diet that includes occasional consumption of meat and other animal products. It is a semi-vegetarian diet that emphasizes plant-based foods, 
but does not completely eliminate animal products from the diet. Flexitarian diets typically involve consuming plant-based foods such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds as the main source of nutrition. The occasional consumption of meat and other animal products is allowed, but in smaller quantities and less frequently than in a traditional Western diet. There is no specific percentage of meat that should be part of one meal in a flexitarian diet, as it varies depending on the individual's preferences and goals. However, it is recommended to limit meat consumption to no more than 25% of total caloric intake per week. A flexitarian diet is a flexible and sustainable approach to healthy eating that can provide numerous health benefits, including weight loss, improved heart health, and reduced risk of chronic diseases such as diabetes and cancer. It can also have environmental benefits by reducing the demand for meat production and decreasing greenhouse gas emissions. A flexitarian diet makes sense in many ways, as it takes a lot of thought and preparation to get the right amounts of proteins and nutrients if you're on a 100% plant-based diet. Vegetation can provide various sources of protein to make up for the lost protein found in meat and eggs. Some examples of plant-based protein sources include Number 1. Legumes Lentils, chickpeas, beans, and peas are all excellent sources of protein. They are also high in fiber, vitamins, and minerals, making them an ideal food to include in a healthy diet. Number 2. Nuts and seeds. Almonds, walnuts, chia seeds, and hemp seeds are all high in protein and healthy fats. They can be eaten as snacks or added to salads, smoothies, or other dishes to boost protein intake. Number 3. Whole grains. Quinoa, brown rice, and whole wheat pasta are all great sources of protein. They are also high in fiber and other essential nutrients. Number 4. Soy products. Tofu, tempeh, and soy milk are all plant-based sources of protein. They are also rich in other important nutrients such as calcium, iron, and vitamin B12. And Number 5. Vegetables. Some vegetables are surprisingly high in protein, such as broccoli, spinach, asparagus, and Brussels sprouts. While they may not contain as much protein as other plant-based sources, they are still an essential part of a balanced diet. By incorporating these plant-based protein sources into their diet, vegetarians and vegans can ensure they are getting enough protein to support their body's needs. It's also important to note that combining different plant-based protein sources can help increase protein intake and ensure that all essential amino acids are being consumed you might want to consider trying out a flexitarian diet. A flexitarian diet will not only be good for you, allowing you to continue having meat in your diet, but meat in lower percentages. Lowering meat consumption is also good for the planet, as it takes less natural resources to grow plants than to raise meat. Additionally, individuals can support organizations that work to protect rainforests, such as the Rainforest Alliance, or the World Wildlife Fund. Finally, individuals can advocate for policies that support rainforest conservation calling for stronger conservation policies and address climate change. This has been a really insightful discussion. Let's now talk about the future of rainforest conservation and indigenous communities. As conservation biologist who has worked extensively with indigenous communities in the Amazon rainforest, can you start by telling us about the current state of rainforest conservation and the role of indigenous communities in this effort? The current state of rainforest conservation is concerning. Despite decades of conservation efforts, deforestation rates are still high, and many species are at risk of extinction. However, we have seen some progress in recent years, thanks in part to the involvement of indigenous communities. Indigenous communities have played a critical role in rainforest conservation. They have traditional knowledge about the forest and its species, which has helped inform conservation strategies. They also have a strong connection to the land and a deep respect for its resources, which has led them to protect the forest from outside threats. That's fascinating. 
Can you tell us more about how indigenous communities are involved in rainforest conservation? Sure. Indigenous communities are involved in many aspects of rainforest conservation. They often participate in monitoring and research activities to help us better understand the forest and its species. They also play a role in ecotourism and sustainable forestry, which can provide economic benefits while also protecting the forest. Additionally, indigenous communities have been successful in advocating for their rights and the protection of their territories. They have been instrumental in securing legal protections for their lands and resources, which has helped to reduce deforestation and protect important habitats. What challenges do you see for the future of rainforest conservation and the involvement of indigenous communities? There are several challenges that we face. One is the ongoing threat of deforestation, which is driven by agriculture, logging, mining, and other activities. Another challenge is the lack of recognition of indigenous rights and their contributions to conservation efforts. There is also a need to address the root causes of deforestation, such as poverty, inequality, and unsustainable economic models. We need to work together to find solutions that benefit both people and the environment. What do you see as the future of rainforest conservation and the involvement of indigenous communities? I believe that the future of rainforest conservation lies in the recognition and empowerment of indigenous communities. By respecting their rights and incorporating their knowledge and perspectives, we can achieve more effective and equitable conservation outcomes. I also see a need for greater collaboration between scientists, conservationists, policymakers, and indigenous communities. We need to work together to develop and implement solutions that address the complex challenges we face. Overall, I am optimistic about the future of rainforest conservation. We have made progress in recent years, and I believe that by working together, we can protect these vital ecosystems for generations to come. As environmental activist and advocates for rainforest conservation, can you tell us about your work and how you got involved in rainforest conservation? My interest in environmental conservation began when I was a child, growing up in a rural area surrounded by forests and wildlife. As I grew up and became more aware of the impact of human activities on the environment, I knew I had to do something to help protect the natural world. I started by volunteering for local conservation organizations, and eventually, my work led me to rainforest conservation. What do you think is the global impact of rainforest conservation, and why is it important? Rainforests are incredibly important to the health of our planet. They produce oxygen, absorb carbon dioxide, and provide habitat for countless plant and animal species. They also provide numerous resources, including food, medicine, and timber. The global impact of rainforest conservation is enormous, and it is essential to the health and well-being of our planet. How can individuals get involved in rainforest conservation, and what can we do to make a difference? There are many ways individuals can get involved in rainforest conservation, from donating to conservation organizations to volunteering to plant trees, or participating in campaigns to raise awareness about the importance of rainforest conservation. We can also make conscious choices in our daily lives to reduce our impact on the environment, such as reducing our consumption of meat, buying sustainably sourced products, and reducing our use of single-use plastics. What challenges do you think lie ahead for rainforest conservation, and how can we address them? One of the biggest challenges we face in rainforest conservation is corporate greed and government policies that prioritize economic development over environmental protection. We need to continue to advocate for policies and practices that prioritize conservation and sustainable development. We also need to work closely with indigenous communities and local stakeholders to ensure their voices are heard and their rights are protected. Finally, what message would you like to send to our listeners about the importance of rainforest conservation? Rainforest conservation is not just about protecting trees or wildlife, it's about protecting our planet and ensuring a sustainable future for generations to come. We all have a role to play in protecting the natural world, and we must take action now to ensure the health and well-being of our planet. For our next topic, 
Can you explain how the rainforest influences the Earth's weather? The rainforest plays a critical role in regulating the Earth's climate. It produces oxygen and absorbs carbon dioxide, which helps to stabilize the planet's temperature. Rainforests are also responsible for producing a large amount of moisture that contributes to the water cycle and ultimately affects weather patterns around the world. Additionally, the evapotranspiration process that occurs within the rainforest is incredibly important for weather patterns. As the trees release water vapor through their leaves, it contributes to the formation of clouds, which in turn can lead to rainfall. This rainfall is not only important for the rainforest ecosystem, but can also have far-reaching impacts on weather patterns in other parts of the world. Deforestation of the rainforest can have a significant impact on weather patterns as well. When large areas of the rainforest are cleared, the amount of moisture that is released into the atmosphere is reduced, which can lead to droughts in surrounding areas. Additionally, the loss of trees means that less carbon dioxide is being absorbed, which can contribute to the warming of the planet and the changing of weather patterns. It's important to recognize the interconnectedness of the rainforest and the planet's climate. Protecting the rainforest is not only crucial for the survival of countless species and indigenous communities, but also for the health of the planet as a whole. Alano and Olivia, as experts in rainforest conservation, what are some ways that people can help save the rainforest? And what organizations can they support to help protect the rainforest? One of the easiest ways for individuals to make a difference is by reducing their consumption of products that contribute to rainforest destruction. This includes products like palm oil, beef, and soybeans that are grown in the rainforest, which are commonly found in many food and household items. By making informed choices and opting for sustainable alternatives, people can help reduce the demand for these products and ultimately reduce the pressure on rainforests. I would also encourage people to support organizations that work directly to protect rainforests and indigenous communities. Some great organizations include Rainforest Alliance, Amazon Watch, and the Rainforest Foundation. These organizations work to preserve rainforests, protect the rights of indigenous communities, and promote sustainable practices. Additionally, people can get involved by supporting policies and initiatives that protect rainforests. And finally, education and awareness are key. By spreading the word and raising awareness about the importance of rainforests and the threats they face, we can help mobilize people and organizations to take action and protect these vital ecosystems. Thank you, Alano Barlow and Olivia Cassidy for sharing your insights and expertise on rainforest conservation. It has been an informative and enlightening discussion on the importance of rainforests, their medicinal potential, the role of indigenous communities, the threats of deforestation and corporate greed, the importance of science and traditional knowledge, the challenges of conservation, the intersection with climate change, and the global impact of advocacy. Before we conclude, could you please share any final thoughts or recommendations for our audience on how they can help save the rainforest and what organizations they could support to help protect it? Absolutely. There are many ways people can help save the rainforest, such as reducing their paper and wood consumption, supporting sustainable agriculture and forestry practices, and advocating for government policies that protect the rainforest. As for organizations, some great ones to support include Rainforest Action Network, Amazon Watch, and Rainforest Foundation U.S. Additionally, people can also support indigenous communities and their rights to protect their ancestral lands, as they have been the stewards of the rainforest for generations. Supporting organizations such as the Indigenous Environmental Network and Cultural Survival can help empower and protect these communities. Thank you for sharing recommendations of organizations that help protect and restore the rainforest and also organizations that help the indigenous people of the rainforest. There will be links to the organizations mentioned in this podcast episode, available in the description area of this podcast. And on behalf of our audience, I would like to thank you both for your time and expertise in shedding light on the importance of rainforest conservation and the critical work being done to protect it. That's all for now. Please visit Opportuno. 
done. Or thank you. The remaining portion of this podcast are Sounds of the Amazon.